Hey all you people, what is going on? Today we are in Northern Maine. It is frigid outside and I should probably have more layers on than I do. But we have a 2017 Audi Q7 that we're going to be taking a closer look at. We're going to take a look at its design, price point, practicality, performance, drawbacks, and finally its reliability. Now, from a design standpoint, the second generation 4M Q7 is a wonderful car. The Q7 took a huge leap in design between the first and second generations. The exterior lines went from slightly bulbous, if you will, to more sleek and squared off. And it is classic Audi in the way that it's relatively conservative with its styling. The proportions of it give it a bit of a wagon look rather than an SUV look, which is really popular right now. And overall, there's nothing too dramatic about the Q7 styling, which a lot of people like, because it's understated. This is a, a in-use vehicle, so there's child seats back here. Samantha, what do you think about the interior? I think the interior is really comfortable. I love these. The leather is really nice. I love the dark brown against the black interior. <gasps> this actually comes standard on all of the models too. Double visor. The Q7 has a functional layout and it seems like the engineers thought of every little detail. There's a nice balance of form and function in the cockpit with plenty of technology as well as an endless amount of Bose speakers. The quality of the materials is also classic Audi in the way that everything seems high end to the touch. It's like a bank fall when you close it. How about this, trying to fit your hand around that. <laughs> Now, on to the price point of a used Audi Q7. Although the Q7s are pricey when they're new, usually around sixty dollars to $70,000, they're still German, which means they face their fair share of depreciation. At the bottom end of pricing, with the oldest second gens turning nearly six years old, you can see some examples in the high $20,000 range, and with slightly newer models jumping up into the mid $30,000 range. Their depreciation is great for secondhand buyers, but not so much for new buyers. And now, on to the practicality of the Q7. The Q7 has all the things that you'd expect from a practical, high-end three-row SUV, with a cavernous amount of trunk room and a configurable seating area. Wow, that's dirty. <laughs> My sister is a veterinarian. Kind of makes sense. She has a lot of dirt and a lot of dog hair in the back of her car. Okay. Like that. Like this. I wonder if the back seats have ever been used in this. Oh. Oh. <laughs> wow. Okay, so, well, mm, you are so squished. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not, not great for adults. You are so squished. That's so funny. You're squished. Got some cup holders, some hard plastics. My head just barely fits. And you have some usable trunk space. Ugh, like that. Okay. Oh, my leg is stuck. Ah! But wait, how do we know the true practicality of an Audi Q7 without seeing if it'll sleep a not so handy car guy? The standard unit of measurement. Oh my goodness, this, that is my sister, everyone. This is her car. <laughs> it, it sleeps a not so handy car guy and dog. <laughs> Plenty of room for an air mattress. I see we found the culprit of all the hair. It's all your fault. Sir, sir, can you explain yourself? Okay, now let's talk about the performance of the Q7. In the US market, we didn't get an SQ7, so this right here is the top of the line engine trim. This has a three liter T. Uh, it's actually supercharged. It is relatively heavy at 5,400 pounds, but it puts out 333 horsepower, and it feels like this engine is just perfectly matched to the weight of the car. That was the turning radius. Ooh, wow, the turning radius. I could do this all day. I could do this all day. 
Oh, snowbank! Wow, that was <laughs> That good. was like really impressive. And it's just, in, in a German anything, it's so amazing how quickly you get up to speed, so effortlessly too. Now, Audi claims that this does zero to 60 in about 5.9 seconds, but I think we should test that out on our own. Okay, we're gonna do a zero to 60. Keep in mind, we have winter tires on here, plenty of salt in the road. I don't know if this has launch control. Let's try it out. Banging those shifts, wow. It did go to 60, it was 6.2 seconds. I'ma just blame it on the tires, that's what it is. As far as like the ride, um, it's not so plush that uh, you can't feel any of the road. It's just a nice compromise between comfort and performance. For steering feel, uh, there really isn't too much steering feel, classic Audi, I know, but it does respond pretty quickly to steering input make it a little more fun to drive. I don't know how Audi does it or German cars in general, but they make their cars feel so sure-footed. Very safe and controllable too. You do have different drive modes here. And if you have that air suspension system, it actually raises and lowers the whole car inches if you put it in different drive modes here. Comfort mode, very, very relaxed shifts. It makes the steering lighter. Uh, it does have paddle shifters, which I don't feel like it's worth paddle shifting this. The three liter V6 is mated to an eight speed ZF automatic transmission. The ZF, as we know, fantastic transmission. It is just a solid workhorse of a transmission that shifts very smoothly and quickly. I honestly can't think of a better car that I'd rather have up here in Maine in the snow. All the frost heaves in the road, this just feels nice and composed over. You got your heated steering wheel, heated seats, and you got that quattro quattro. Quattro quattro. All right, there is a, a road here. Um, it has snowmobile tracks on it. No tire tracks of any car. It's probably a foot and a half of snow. And if I get my sister's car stuck, there's no service here. So putting a lot of faith in this all wheel drive system in these snow tires. I am scraping a little bit on the snow here. This thing's clawing in. Oh, an absolute animal. <laughs> Everyone needs Quattro all wheel drive. Woohoo! Rally pedigree right here. <laughs> oh, whoa. So like I said, this has the top of the line engine in the US market. The base engine is the EA888, the two liter turbo, which I can imagine to be relatively underpowered in this. As far as fuel economy goes, uh, it's rated at 19 city and 24, 25 highway, about middle of the pack in this class. Also when it's properly equipped, like this model, it can tow up to 7,700 pounds, which is pretty respectable. So overall, I am very pleased with the performance. Okay, as for drawbacks, this car is so well-rounded, um, it's, it's hard to think of drawbacks, actually. But in the early second gen Q7s, um, I do wish that there was a touchscreen. You only have this control center right here. And in order to get a touchscreen and a nice touchscreen at that, uh, you have to get the, the refresh, the facelift second gen Q7. Another drawback is the relative lack of standard features at its base price point. And these additional features come with a hefty price tag. If you build out a Q7 with all the specs, all the features, it can go up to $90,000. <laughs> and lastly, another drawback is uh, the third row seat. It's usable in a pinch, but it's meant mainly for children. So if you want a more usable third row seat, you might wanna go with something a little larger. Okay, the moment we have all been waiting for, 
the Audi Q7's reliability. The second gen Q7s have finally been out long enough where we can start to see uh, their long-term reliability. As far as powertrains go, the 3 liter and 2 liter engines offered in the Q7 are generally very reliable. Typically, German designs have tight tolerances and are fickle when it comes to maintenance. Both the 3 liter and the 2 liter engines that come in the Q7 are no exception to this. It's important to use high quality oil with these and always keep up to date on your services. In the past, a lot of VW products have had timing chain wear issues, and those issues are only accelerated by running on old oil. Another common failure on both of these engines is water pump and thermostat failure. More specifically, the bearings in the water pump as well as the gaskets. Another issue is carbon buildup, but this is a common problem on pretty much all direct injection engines. And a good way to prolong the need for carbon cleaning is by, you guessed it, using high quality oil. One last problem with the engines is the diaphragm and the PCV systems prematurely wearing out, which is a relatively inexpensive part, but labor intensive if you have the 3 liter engine, because it requires removing the supercharger. Aside from powertrains, Volkswagen products are known for having a lot of different sensors throughout the car, and these sensors will occasionally trigger the check engine light. Traction control off, check engine light on, we're good to go. Like all the lights came on, ding, 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 and then he's going five miles an hour right here. To my knowledge, this is still a common issue, or it could just be a mouse chewing up your wiring and making a nest inside your engine bay, like my sister. They had it all apart, said they found a mouse nest. What? No way. Chewed some wires. If you end up purchasing an Audi Q7, I highly recommend investing in a scan tool. This way you can read the fault codes on your own. Overall, the second gen Audi Q7 has to be one of my favorite SUVs in this segment. It's tough to beat its refinement, its practicality, its design, its performance. It's just a all-in-one package. Anyhow, we're gonna go back in the car where we have heated seats. Take care now, bye-bye then. What do you think of your car? I like it. Sick! <laughs> Feel free to please leave a comment down below. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. Maybe drink some hot chocolate. And I hope you have a great rest of your evening. <laughs>